Let's get cracking. So good morning, everyone. Uh, we are one lesson into further integration. At the moment, <coughs> excuse me. At the moment, it's going to, I hope, still feel pretty familiar to what you've been doing in <coughs> Extension One. Just to call you my Mac when we were having a look at that uh, increasingly large concentric circles diagram, right? One of the things that we learned in Extension One was how to integrate something by substitution, which is just a fancy way of reversing the chain rule, right? <coughs> we always provide a substitution in extension one integration, and we'll often provide a substitution in extension two integration. But the skill we're going to focus on today, and we're going to sort of drill down a little further in Tuesday's lesson, will be when you don't get given a substitution, how do you determine it? Remember that um, metaphor I gave you for opening the mystery box? You have to think for a moment and contemplate, well, which ways will I combine this? You have to make some choices, right? It's not just automatic. Now, we're going to start off uh, dipping our toes in. Sometimes, even though it's not automatic, it's pretty close. Have a look at this, right? They'll say, using a suitable substitution, integrate such, right? Now, when you have a look at it, because of the way that it's crafted, it's not too arduous to think, what might be a useful thing that I could introduce and say, let you equal this, and it will make everything dramatically easier. Would anyone like to make a suggestion? Let you, let's just all jot this down on the side, by the way. Let you equal what's underneath the radical sign in the denominator. So if I go x cubed plus 1, this is a good choice, right? It's good because you can see What's problematic about this is this square root business, right? It's almost like if that square root wasn't there, just visualize it for a second, if the square root wasn't there, you can tell me almost immediately, you don't even need to do the formal way, what would this integrate into without the square root sign? Have a think. What, what family of functions are we going to? You've got an x squared on the top, you've got an x cubed plus 1 on the bottom. This is going to go to log, isn't it? Because your numerator is almost almost exactly, it's only off by a constant coefficient uh, compared to your denominator. But that square root is what makes it problematic. So in order to sort of get away from that problem, this, is, this substitution here will allow us to treat this more or less as like a regular polynomial, which is about what's going to happen. If we're going to make a substitution for u, we need to make a substitution for dx as well, because we want to change the variable integration. So as you're used to, in extension 1, let's go ahead and differentiate the thing we're going to substitute in. This is not too difficult. What are we going to get? 3x squared. 3x squared. Thank you very much. Now, at this point here, you've got a few choices of how to do your notation. Um, they're not going to be substantially different in terms of the way you approach the question. Um, I'm going to advocate for one particular way, but I'm just going to signal right out the gate that of all the ways you can do, <coughs> excuse me, and I can think of at least three properly different ways that you'll all have seen in all your classes, right? None of them is perfect. They're all slightly a bit of a compromise. Okay? Right. So here's one way that we can set this up. I've got a du on dx here. I've got a 3x squared here. And I can see several of these components of what are going to appear in here to do my substitution, right? One of the ways that's going to make this easy for me to minimize the amount of work and confusion is to try and get the dx and the x squared, which I see in my integral, to appear together. And then I can just do a straight substitution, right? So in this case, that means two things. I'm going to multiply both sides by this dx thing here, which gives me this over here, and just going to give me du over here. And then at the same time, I don't really want 3x squared. I actually just want a single x squared. So simultaneously, I'll divide both sides by 3. You okay with that? Now, I said right out the gate, right? This is not a perfect way to do things, because in reality, this, this thing here, this is not a fraction, right? Du on dx. We write it as a fraction, because that's kind of how chain rule works. But really, if you think back to the beginning of calculus, right, there's all kind of weird limiting processes, and like dividing by zero business. There's a lot of stuff under the hood that's going on here, okay? So, by rights, we shouldn't actually be able to do this. We're treating d on dx like a fraction, even though it isn't really. So that's kind of the, what's the word I'm looking for? That's the Achilles heel in using this notation. However, it is still actually useful. In the context that we're going to um, work with, whenever you use chain rule, you actually can treat d on dx very much like a fraction. Um, the only times when you can't are situations 
we're not really going to hand you are uh, things like this. Uh, if I gave you some function, I'm just going to leave this for a second, um, that was something like x squared plus y squared. Now you're used to thinking of that as a circle, right? But only if this left hand part is a constant of some kind. It might not be. What you're getting here is a function in two variables. Now if you were to differentiate this thing, suddenly you have a bit of a problem that you never had to encounter before, which is you have to choose which variable you're interested in differentiating with respect to. That sentence is longer than what I meant. So therefore, if some of you go ahead and do uh, this level of mathematics at university, you'll learn there's something called a partial differential equation. And instead of saying, you know, df on dx or dy, we introduce this other weird notation. It's just Greek, right? It's like, oh, differentiate with respect to y, just treat x as a constant. Or differentiate with respect to x, and just treat y as a constant. So in situations like this, this is like cardinal sin number one. You can't do this. So within the scope of this course, I'm just going to say, go for it. It's totally fine, okay? But it would be irresponsible of me to just say, let's just treat it as a fraction. It's more or less like a fraction. It's going to make our question really easy. It's not, but under these particular circumstances, it's okay, right? That's what you get because you're an essential two students. I'm ready now. I don't have any boundaries to worry about because it's an indefinite integral. So help me out. Can we do the substitution? What do I get? I'm going to get this one third du, right? Because you can see that substitution happening here. So let's go ahead and put one third du. And then on the denominator, I have square du, right? Now I guess at this point I can tidy up a little bit further, right? That constant coefficient doesn't really need to be within the integral. And then how would you suggest I write that denominator to make it a little easier to work with? You do the power of negative one half. Very nice. Okay. Do you need me to keep helping you at this point? Uh, you can go ahead and tell me what to do, right? What do you get? <coughs> two over u to the power of half. So that two, that two, which you've actually done after getting this, that two comes from dividing by a new power. You got that new power by increasing this by one. Am I done? It's an indefinite integral, so I have my constant and integration. And then you'll do what's sometimes called a back substitution, right? We introduced you to make things more convenient. The original question had nothing to do with you, so we'll just restore it back to what it should be. That's a two thirds. Uh, I put it the, in index form just to make it easier for ourselves, so I'll go back to radical form, and there's our substitution x cubed plus 1. Happy times? Okay. So as I said, often, like even though this is extension 2 because you have to choose the substitution, often actually it sort of writes itself. Yeah? The substitution isn't too complicated to choose. Have a look at number two over here on the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to give you a second to have a think about this one. Again, it's similar to this, you're like, oh, I've got some squaring business on a denominator. Maybe that's going to be problematic. Have a think about how you might do the substitution for this. What choice of substitution might be suitable. You might choose one that actually leads you down a garden path. That's okay. Try another one. And then don't forget, you also need to change the variable of integration, so there's an extra step along with that. I'll give you a minute or two to get a head start on me, and then we'll start working on it together.